Hello everyone. My name is Ellie Taylor and I'm an auditor. And I've been an auditor for over 25 years in my career. So why am I here today? Well, my recent, my most recent role at Nationwide Building Society was as an audit senior manager, taking care of the transformation and IT portfolio. As part of that work, I interacted with lots of IT and change teams, and I saw an increasing use of words and phrases that were relatively new to me at that time. This was about four years ago. People started talking about Scrum and Kanban boards and sticky notes and ceremonies and all sorts of things that sounded really intriguing. So I decided to do some research and find out what it was all about and whether or not this was something that we should be looking at in internal audit and whether we should adopt those new ways of working. What I found really intrigued and excited me because I was absolutely clear that we could start to adopt and adapt some of those ways of working within internal audit. So today I'm here to share our lessons along the way um, and how we went about adopting new ways of working with internal audit what new ways of working mean to us and how they've benefited us. And those key lessons that we keep close to us as we continue on our journey. So before I go into any details about that, I think it's really important that we think about the internal audit context. And actually, I think internal audit is really good. It's a good area for this sort of work. It's really, really fertile ground. So we have around 90 auditors and they are broadly aligned to business areas. The majority of them are located within and with the business in our Swindon head office, or they were until um, very recently. We also have a few auditors that are scattered around in some of our sub offices uh, like Bournemouth and Northampton. And we now have some in London. Our teams are typically small. They're around two to five people probably no more than that. And the average lead time, the start and end of an audit, takes around 16 weeks on average. We run a traditional hierarchy or we have a traditional hierarchy with an internal audit. Uh, so we have a chief internal auditor who sits at the top, who's supported by a senior leadership team, who then oversee lots of audit teams that deliver those audits. And we run a standard linear methodology. And by linear, I mean that we have a planning phase that's followed by another phase, which we call risk and control evaluation, which is then followed by some testing and is then followed by some reporting. And between each of those phases, um, there's a there's a gateway so that um, you can't proceed from one phase to the next phase without going through a gateway. That's how it was. What we do have in internal audit at Nationwide is a bunch of hugely enthusiastic and highly motivated people who are willing to have a go at all sorts of things and try stuff out, try new stuff. Um, and that really can't be underestimated. And it's been critical to the success that we've achieved within our function. So it's taken two years, probably two and a half years, but most of our audits are now using agility and different ways of working in some way. Some of them to a larger extent than others, but that depends on their individual context. Before I go into any details about, again, before I go into any details, I just wanted to share with you some testimonials from our auditees, some feedback that we've received along the way. These are really important because they show that we haven't tried to do this in isolation and we've really thought about how this impacts on our auditees. Because at the end of the day, what we want to do is deliver valuable audits to our auditees. If we can't manage that, then we are, we are not going to achieve what we need to achieve. So if I start with the first one, and that's from our Chief um, Executive Officer, Joe Garner. And he, he came along and visited us and saw all of our whiteboards in the office. And he also spent some time at a daily stand up, which was a bit unnerving for the teams at the time, but was great because what he saw was really good collaboration between the audit teams and the business and how effective that interaction can be, um, even on a, on a short uh, amount of time. 
The next one really shows um, for me how we've achieved something that many audit functions have tried for years to achieve and um, sometimes manage it, but not consistently manage it. And that's no surprises. So we all have char charters in our internal audit functions that say no surprises. In most of the places that we've worked, that's really, really hard. The adoption of new ways of working has allowed us to make that a consistent reality. And that's seen in this feedback. And then the last two bits of feedback really are, were the start of what we now have as a huge library of feedback um, that demonstrates the value that we bring to our teams, the positive engagement, how engaging it is, how the business now understand what it is that we do because we allow them to see what we do and we work with them. Um, and the final, uh, the final sentence on this slide is probably one of my favourite sentences of feedback that I've ever received or the teams have ever received. And that is, I am a great fan of the Agile audit. Imagine that as an auditor, somebody saying they're a great fan of your work. It's absolutely transformational. So if I move on to, so how did we do it? Well, context is the thing. So throughout all of this, it's all about thinking about what is the internal audit context? How is that different? What are the things that are right for internal audit that may not be right for IT um, and that world, but actually in audit it works? The first thing we looked at when we were looking at how we were going to do this was what are our reasons for change? So what, what is it that we are